Hey foos, T here, and in this episode of Versus, we're gonna pit the fan favorite GameCube against the cultural and commercial phenomenon that was the Nintendo Wii to decide which gaming console did it best. This has been a debate stewing on Twitter amongst some of my fellow Nintendo fans and the community, mainly because of me and my good friend Retro Death. We both made videos a few months back that got the debate started, and I told him I was gonna come back in another video and pimp slap him with the greatness of the Wii. If you saw my video, you already know which console I thought was better. So instead of just doing a simple response video to Retro Death's video, I decided to create a new series and call it Versus. Y'all know me. I have to do it big and creatively or I'd rather not do it at all. I haven't completely fleshed out my new Versus series yet, but the next episode will surely be Banjo-Kazooie versus Super Mario 64. That one, along with this video, has been in the works for quite some time. My busy lifestyle and work schedule has made it hard to dedicate time to doing these kinds of videos. Gonna have to figure out a way for me to get more time to do these types of videos because I love creating them for you foos. But with that out of the way, let's get the battle raging. First I want you to understand that although I'm gonna back many of my positions with facts, a lot of my opinions are just that, opinions, and are highly subjective. No matter how strongly a person might feel about their position, that doesn't make it fact. As I've said before, to some, other people's opinions are like onions. So try not to let my onions make you fools cry. This is all in good fun and debate. And now, the parameters and categories for this battle. The categories are as follows. Features, design and controller, games, commercial success and industry impact. After which I'll give my verdict, and as I said, you should probably already know what that is. But in future episodes you won't. And I promise the journey in this video will still be fun. With all that said, let's get started, shall we? Features. For starters, let's take a look at the Wii's feature set, shall we? One of the Nintendo Wii's biggest features is allowing backwards compatibility with the Nintendo GameCube's games, pretty much rendering GameCube hardware relevant out of the gate. That's it, we're done here folks. We wins it all. Thanks for watching. Bye! <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, backwards compatibility is a great feature that adds great instant value to a new console, giving it an instant library of great games that you may already own or could pick up for pretty cheap. It's a nice way to instantly beef up your library. And continuing on with Wii's awesome features, we have the excellent Virtual Console. Now gamers can play an abundance of classic titles from the NES to TurboGrafx-16 to Sega Genesis and even the Nintendo 64. Along with the Virtual Console was WiiWare, home to many original titles from established third parties as well as budding indie developers. Virtual Console and WiiWare expanded the Wii's library of titles, but nothing could extend the games themselves like online multiplayer. For the first time in their history, Nintendo decided to go full bore into online gaming with the Wii. And while it wasn't as competent or fully featured with every game, it was a valiant effort from a company with no efforts of that kind on the GameCube, offering only two Sega titles that supported online gaming. Pretty pathetic. And how about introducing the gaming world to Miis? Those simple, cute little avatars that you could create as a digital representation of yourself to customize and personalize your gaming experience. How cool was it to see your Mii show up in multiple game titles, either as a means to save your game or actually use your Mii as a playable character in games? So cool. And let's not forget the cool little off-forgotten Wii features like viewing and manipulating JPEG photos on your SD card, 
as well as allowing you to use custom tracks in games like Excite Truck and the Endless Ocean series from MP3s on your SD cards as well. But don't take my word for it, let's hear from a respected YouTuber, Sean Long, aka RGT85, on his feelings about the Wii's feature set, including Virtual Console and Online Multiplayer. Take it away, Sean! RGT85! RGT85! The Wii's Virtual Console is light years ahead of the Wii U's Virtual Console, and that's a fact. You had NES, Super NES, N64, you had imports, TurboGrafx-16, Game Gear, Master System, Genesis, you had arcade games, you had uh, unreleased in the United States games. Like, there was so much stuff on the, just the virtual console side. That's not even putting into effect the original titles for it. Remember the Rebirth series? You had Contra Rebirth, Castlevania Rebirth. Those were awesome, exclusive games to the Wii. And like nobody talks about them. Nobody talks about how good the virtual console was. I guess because the online component of the Wii was definitely a few steps behind, you know, the competition at the time. It was definitely more of a PS2 online system than a PS3, and the PS3 was of course already out. But that's not to say that there weren't online games on the Wii, because there were. There were some actually really good first-person shooters that, once again, nobody talks about. First-person shooters are, you know, a huge genre now. And they really got their their foothold, I feel, in the late PS2 to PS3 era as, you know, a dominant franchise. You had games like The Conduit and The Conduit 2, both which had online multiplayer and both had a solid single player. Call of Duty fans, you had Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare, you had a Black Ops on there. And yeah, the graphics were dumbed down, but I felt the controls actually added to those games with the, you know... The, the motion controls because it just seemed a little bit easier once you got the feel for it you could dominate with those motion controls and it was just it was fun you even had medal of honor heroes which had 32 player online 32 player online you don't even see that in ps4 or xbox one games now and it's crazy because the Wii did it you know and that was an early title in the Wii's library so it was very impressive and as for the gamecube's features well you could hear different GameCube logo music if you held down certain buttons during the intro. Design and Control Let me start off by saying that if you don't like motion controls, I'm not here to convince you otherwise. I for one love them and so do many others. As a gamer who liked the mouse and keyboard approach to first person shooters on PCs and loved the way the analog stick and C buttons felt for that genre on the N64, I never comfortably made the transition to dual analog. So the Wii's motion controls were right up my alley and I once again felt really comfortable playing first person shooters. And while I would never dismiss anyone's dissenting opinions against motion controls, I also won't tolerate people who dismiss my opinions about how I love motion controls when they're used well and my belief in their superior functionality in many cases. There are plenty of occasions where someone using motion controls completely owned people using traditional controls, and that to me proves their viability. Oh yeah, and the Wii motion controls started an industry-wide fucking astronomical phenomenon. The Wii, for better or worse, really changed gaming. And if motion controls suck so bad, Sony, Microsoft, you know, PlayStation Move, Connect, come on guys. Motion controls are a bona fide and viable way to play video games and the Wii Remote and Nunchuck were beautifully designed in complicated simplicity to bring that style of play to fruition. The Wii Remote and Nunchuck simply melted in your hand, and the comfort of relaxing and playing a video game with your hands apart is just brilliant. This controller injected new life into many forgotten gaming genres, like rail shooters, and the Wii has some of the best in the genre. On the other hand, the GameCube controller really came off to me as a traditional controller trying to be special. It is comfortable as hell, no doubt, but the yellow nub analog stick and the bean buttons orbiting the big green A button feel like it's trying too hard to not look like an Xbox or PS2 DualShock while essentially doing the same things as these controllers do. And don't get me started on the poorly placed, stiff feeling Z button, why? The GameCube controller is very comfortable and the analog triggers were definitely a plus. But after seeing Nintendo shake up the industry with the NES controller, the SNES controller, and the jarring uniqueness of the N64 controller, the GameCube controller just seems bland and tame by comparison. The Wii console itself is a sleek, sexy, glossy rectangle 
that sits elegantly in your entertainment center. You can lay it down flat and sit it atop your cable box or digital movie player and it fits nicely. Or you could display it in its stand on its side and it sits stylishly asking for attention. Especially when you get notifications from WeConnect24 and the lips to your disk drive start to strobe blue. It always looks so good in a dark room and I hated making it go away by turning on my console. Meanwhile, the GameCube was just that, a cube. Exciting. The front face with the drab gray four controller ports is astonishingly bland. Honestly, the most memorable, notable thing about the GameCube's design is the baffling baby handle on the back and the baby sized game discs. The Wii on the other hand had a more mature design and big boy game discs. The purple lunchbox that is the GameCube was clearly designed for babies and babies hands. Let me introduce you to a new baby. <laughs> For me, what makes a console great is its exclusive software. What can I play on this box that I can't experience anywhere else? It's a simple and fair concept. You don't agree? Well, let me help you out. What if, in 2001, Nintendo said every game we make for the GameCube will also be out on PC? Everything from first party to third party multiplats can be bought and played on the PC. What would be special about having that purple box the GameCube then? Exactly. So while third-party multiplats added value to the gamer who bought a GameCube, games I can also get on PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC don't add anything to the greatness of the GameCube. Same goes for Wii. While using motion controls in core games was cool, Tiger Woods, Star Wars Force Unleashed, Call of Duty Black Ops, etc. don't contribute to the Wii's greatness factor either. But exclusive third-party games do. Games like Beautiful Joe, Project Number 3, Killer7, and the Rogue Squadron series are applicable. What about Nintendo's core franchises? Which console represented them better? It is notable that Nintendo's second tier franchises like F-Zero, Star Fox, etc. never came to Wii. But I'd argue that the first tier franchises were better represented on Wii. Mario Sunshine vs. Mario Galaxy, Galaxy by a Country Mile, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat vs. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Again, no contest. Kirby Air Ride vs. Kirby Epic Yarn and Return to Dreamland? Yep, demolished. I don't count Star Fox Adventures as a Star Fox game. Doesn't mean I don't like it, because I do. It was certainly a pretty game, one of the GameCube's best looking games to date. But at the end of the day, it's at times a soulless Zelda clone with shallow combat. I've beaten the game twice and I don't remember a single boss battle. I'm not even kidding. I wish I was. And just like Star Fox Assault, Nintendo couldn't be bothered to develop the game themselves. Hell, even F-Zero GX, arguably the best F-Zero game, was developed by Sega. Now let that sink in for a minute. When you get to the Zeldas, Metroids, Mario Karts, and Smash Brothers, it gets really murky. Is Brawl or Melee better? Subjective. But most people would probably say Melee. But only one of those had online multiplayer. Mario Kart Wii vs Double Dash? Again, subjective. I tend to prefer Double Dash, but sadly Double Dash wasn't online. Metroid Prime 3 and Other M versus Metroid Prime 1 and 2, again murky. Many people didn't like Prime 2, and many people didn't like Other M, including myself. I acknowledge the difficulty and at times unnerving backtracking in Prime 2, but I suppose I'd give the edge to Metroid on Q. Metroid Prime 3 is clearly fantastic and the second best Prime game. Zelda is the oddest to judge. I love Wind Waker. Even though they turned Link into a little blinky-eyed eight-year-old, remember the GameCube was made for babies. <laughs> but I love Skyward Sword more. It had better fleshed out secondary characters and a more compelling story and world. More engrossing gameplay and dynamics. Twilight Princess, what an odd duck. The game was clearly developed from the ground up on the GameCube and was clearly a response to fan outcry over the controversial art style of Wind Waker. But the game obviously was ported to Wii and actually launched on Wii before the GameCube version and given sweet motion aiming but not so sweet sword waggle. Again, subjective. Wii clearly has the better Wario game. I guess you can consider that franchise third tier. Battalion Wars are on both consoles so that's a wash. 
who had the better exclusive RPGs? Is the mediocre Lost Kingdom series on GameCube better than the Rune Factory series on Wii? No. Is the Beitin Kaito series better than Last Story and Xenoblade Chronicles? Hell no. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on GameCube, you say? Well, the Wii has two Crystal Chronicle games, and they're also pretty good. Tales of Symphonia? Yeah, the Wii has one too, although the GameCube one is better, but not by a whole lot. Skies of Arcadia? Really? We're counting Dreamcast ports now? So do you also count Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 and Crazy Taxi as GameCube games? Nope. We had more and better exclusive RPGs overall that you probably missed because you were staring at Wii Play sales. Not my problem. Eternal Darkness had a superb story and atmosphere with a cool sanity meter gimmick that quickly loses its luster though. But did you find anything memorable beyond that? How about the combat? Yep, you already forgot. The Wii also had some pretty sweet exclusive horror titles. From The Calling, to Curse Mountain, to Obscure the Aftermath. Have you ever heard of Obscure the Aftermath? No? Well, I guarantee the creators of PS4's Until Dawn has. They seem to have copied, <clears throat> excuse me, been influenced heavily by Obscure on Wii. All the way down to the cheesy, cliched, teen horror movie aspects. Exclusive first-person shooters? Yeah, Wii has those. No contest with Conduit series alone. The Red Steel series, well at least Red Steel 2. Exclusive creative 3D platformers? Sure. The Core Gang, Mushroom Men, Epic Mickey, all amazing for Wii. There were also awesome puzzlers like Bloom Blocks, Domino Rally, Marble Madness, Trauma Center, and Big Brain Academy. Exclusives like Geist and Chibi Robo are damn good, but I can come back with the likes of Mad World, Zack and Wiki, Dead Space Extraction, Ghost Squad, Taxinoko vs. Capcom, No More Hero series, Need I Go On? I mean, what on GameCube's third party exclusive wise was even close to Travis Touchdown or Pandora's Tower? King Story? We got sequels to games we never saw coming. The Wii brought back franchises that I never thought I'd see again. You look at something like Knights. Knights, of course, was a Sega Saturn hit. It was one of the best games on the Saturn and they made Knight's Journey of Dreams on the Wii. And I never thought I would see another Knight's game again, so I was really excited for it. It wasn't as great as the original Knight's, but it was still a good game. You can even look towards Nintendo themselves as bringing back genre, or uh, bringing back, you know, game franchises. With Excite, you had the Excite truck game. It was nice to see that again. You also had Donkey Kong return in a standard 2D format you know, that Super Nintendo style of gameplay. You didn't have that on the GameCube. You didn't have that on the N64. So it was great to see that return. You also had lesser known ones, the Klonoa remake, A Boy and His Blob. There was just so many games that showed up on the Wii and you were like, huh, well, what's that doing on there? But I would always buy them because those were the games that sparked my interest. Those were the games that I thought were really cool and like, you wouldn't see this on the PS3. You wouldn't see this on the Xbox 360. So that's what made the system unique. You also had, you know, a genre come back. That being the light gun game. You know, the Wii remote was essentially a zapper. So, you know, you would just point it at the screen, zap, 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 zap. And it made light gun games come back. You had um, Dead Space and Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles 1 and 2, which were, you know, sort of light gun slash adventure games, but they were really fun. And it was a way to put these franchises on the Wii. You also had Sega coming out with a bunch of awesome games. You had Ghost Squad, you had House of the Dead uh, 2 and 3 compilation disc, and you had House of the Dead Overkill. And Ghost Squad and House of the Dead 2 and 3 were both budget games. When they came out, I believe they were only $30. And so it was like a no brainer. It was like, okay, do you like arcade games? Do you like arcade style games? Do you want an online leaderboard? Here, check out this game. And it was just so much fun. I just loved light gun games. The Wii is actually what brought me back into hardcore gaming. Um, that generation, the GameCube, PS2, Xbox era, I was in high school, I was doing a lot of different stuff. So I wasn't playing games quite as much. And so I was 21 at the time of the release of the Wii, and that's what really brought me back in. I can go on and on about how many Wii games you might have missed while whining about raving rabbits. Bottom line is the GameCube can't touch the uniqueness and variety of games on the Wii on its best day. It was inevitable for a system that was so popular 
to have such a varied, robust library. It's simple math, really. And speaking of library, can we please tackle the Wii shovelware argument and put it to rest? There is a contingency of people out there who argue against the merits of the Wii by pointing to the shovelware library, as if shovelware is an exclusive thing and only exists on the Wii, completely ignoring the overwhelming mountains of pure shit found on consoles like the PS1, the PS2, Atari 2600, and yes, the Nintendo Entertainment System. You don't think the NES had massive amounts of garbage games? Well, let me point you to a man named James Rolfe, AKA the angry video game nerd who made a career off of pointing out that trash. My point being, popular consoles always have an exorbitant amount of trash made for them. Why? It's called math. If a console has a large install base and is cheap to develop for, a company sees an opportunity to make some quick cash with minimal effort. There is buttloads of garbage on iOS and Android, as well as Steam. Disgusting amounts of feces on the NES, PlayStation 1, Super NES, and PS2, as well as the Sega Genesis, Game Boy, GBA, and yes, the Nintendo DS is littered with abysmal tripe because the hardware was so popular and cheap to make games for. The only reason people focus on that on the Wii is because of the gimmicky controller and the fact that many non-gamers also bought a Wii. Is that fair? I don't think so. But the fact remains that popular consoles always end up with a ton of trash on them, and the Wii was no exception. Reception and Impact So the final category is Reception and Impact and really there was no contest in this realm. The Wii came out of the gate in astronomical success, selling out everywhere. For two years it was hard to find a Wii. It was a global phenomenon. As we all know, it was on Ellen DeGeneres, it was on Oprah, it was in movies and everywhere. Selling a lot on the strength of Wii Sports and of course Wii Fit with the balance board. And like I said, the GameCube was a fan favorite, but it was not a commercial hit. But honestly, to my surprise, a lot of the third party games sold really well. I believe over 120 third party games on the GameCube hit a million plus sales, which is great especially for a console with such a small install base. And to me, that kind of kills the myth of the Nintendo fan not buying third-party games. Because when we have the opportunity to, they don't sell as well as the games on the Xbox or the PlayStation brand. We all know the third parties sell a lot better over there. But third parties can be successful in Nintendo consoles, and the GameCube proved that. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this is mostly subjective. There really is no clear-cut winner here or there. Obviously, for me, the winner is the Wii. But for you know a lot of people, the winner is definitely GameCube. And I think for the most part, the reason people choose GameCube over Wii most of the time is that during their perspective eras, the GameCube was more on par with the other systems that were out. Obviously, it was more powerful than PlayStation 2, and it was just under the Xbox from all accounts. While the Wii was certainly super underpowered during its era, and it appealed to non-gamers, and I think that turned off a lot of gamers because of that, but that didn't mean just because of the astronomical success of those non-gamer type of games and applications, there wasn't a lot of great core games on the system, and there were, as I pointed out here. And as I still believe, the GameCube first party stuff was not as good as the Wii first party. Also along with that power, as far as being on par during their eras, uh, the GameCube got a lot of third party support that was on par with the other consoles. And I think that's how people mostly view it. But we did get a lot of third party games and like the GameCube, a lot of third party games sold a million or more. And even if they didn't sell a million copies, they were still very profitable because to make a Wii game, especially in that era, was super cheap to do. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I laid out my case. What do you think? Are you more of a Wii guy or a GameCube guy? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you as always for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time on the next Versus. Oh yeah, one more thing. Play Nintendo, fools.